Hello, I'm Helen Bradley and welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial I'll show you how you can successfully get photos off your camera and onto your computer. In this video I'll show you how you can control the process of downloading photos either from a camera card or from your camera direct to your computer. Now exactly what's going to happen when you plug your camera into your computer or you insert a camera card into your computer will depend on a few things. It depends on what type of computer you're working on. The Mac and the PC are a little bit different. It will also depend on what software you have installed and exactly how everything is configured. But the really important thing to remember is that you can be boss of this process and you don't have to give in to a program that opens and tries to grab your photos from you. And in this case in particular I'm talking about programs like iPhoto which has a propensity for trying to grab your photos. But so too does Adobe Photoshop Elements and neither of them does a particularly good job of the task. Now in my case I've just inserted a camera card into my computer and I get this little autoplay dialog. Now I don't have to do anything that's being suggested here, it's my choice. But one of the things that I could do and that's available to absolutely anybody is to open a folder to view files. You can actually see the files on a camera card or on your camera as if it were a disk or a drive connected to your computer. So I'm just going to click this one to see it. And this is my removable disk F. It's the disk that I just inserted into my computer. And in DCIM I'm going to find a couple of folders here, or three folders that have my images in them. Let's just open this folder and here are the DNG images that I captured just the other day. And there are two other folders of those images. Now this would be as easily accessible on the Mac. You can just open this up in Finder so you can see your photos. And one of the choices you have is that you could manually copy the images. So I'm just going to open up another occurrence of Windows Explorer. And let's go to my pictures. I'm just going to right click here and add a new folder. Now I know that these images were all of a kitten that I shot the other day. So I'm just going to call the folder kitten and I'm just going to open up the new folder. And what I could do is I can just come in here press Control A to select all these photos and I can drag and drop them into the kitten folder and they'll just be copied across. And of course because I had three folders of images I would need to do that for the other two folders as well. And what Windows is doing is just copying those images across for me. This is one way that I can have quite a bit of control over the process. But by the same token I'm also not being given a lot of choices. There are other applications that I could use that would allow me to do more things with my images as I import them. For example if I used Bridge or Lightroom I could add metadata to my images as I import them and I could also back up my images. So if you're using Photoshop or Lightroom then you might be able to make a better choice in importing your images by using one of those applications rather than doing the process manually. Now I'm just going to cancel this because I don't really need it to progress but you can see that we would be copying our images from our camera card onto the computer. You can't move them. Moving would mean that they'd be removed from the camera card and that's just not possible in either Windows or on the Mac. So I would need to come back later and remove those images from the camera card and the best place to do that is actually in the camera. So I'd take the card out of my computer. I would eject it correctly by clicking here and then clicking on the safely remove hardware and eject media button. I would then go and select my drive which is this drive F here and eject it and as soon as it's safe to remove it I would remove it from my computer, put it back into my camera and reformat the card in my camera to erase the images from it or simply just delete all the images depending on exactly what process I use typically for deleting images from a disk in my camera. Now I'm just going to pop my camera card back into my computer and let's have a look at a different way of bringing images into my computer. 
If I have Adobe Bridge installed, it may behove me to use Bridge to bring my images in because there are additional options available. Let's just launch Bridge here and I'm going to go and choose File and then Get Photos from Camera because that's the same process as getting them from a camera card. This is the Adobe Bridge Photo Downloader and I'm going to click Advanced Dialog because that gives me just a few more options. I'm first going to select my device and I want to grab my F drive which is my camera or card reader. Bridge has gone and had a look on the disk and it's now showing me the images and each one of these is already selected. If I only wanted to import a subset of my images, I could do so. I can click Uncheck All and you can see here that unlike when we did this in Windows, I can actually see the pictures that I'm looking at. So I could select a few of these images and just opt to import those. So one of the benefits of using Bridge, and we'll see that again in Lightroom, is that we can actually see the photos that we plan to import. We can also choose things like the location so I can browse here to pick up a folder that I want to import my images into. Well I'm going to import them into the exact same folder as I was using previously so I'll just select that folder and click select folder. Now I can add them into a subfolder by shot date if I want to. I don't want to do that so I'm just going to click None but you'll see that there are other options here for specifying a subfolder for our images. I can also choose to rename my file so if I wanted to I could rename them with all sorts of naming conventions. I'm going to give them a custom name so I'm going to call them Kitten and then they're going to have a sequential number 0001, 0002 and so on. In the advanced options I can select what's going to happen once I import these images. I can open Bridge. I can convert them to DNG. I could delete the original files but I suggest that you never choose to do that. It's just not really very safe. I always prefer to make sure that the images are on my disk safely before I go ahead and delete the originals. Here too in Bridge I have the ability to save copies so I could make a backup of my images on import. So for example I could go here and I could select an external drive. I have a couple of external drives connected to this computer and I could create a folder here into which I save a duplicate of these images. So in the single process of importing my images I could also back them up and that makes really good sense. The other thing I can do here in Bridge that I couldn't do in Windows is to apply some metadata to my images as I import them. I have some Helen Bradley copyright metadata and if I click to apply this my metadata template is going to be applied automatically to these images. My metadata template contains details of my copyright and my address and website and all that sort of thing that is important to me to embed inside my images. So if I'm happy with this I would just click Get Media to import the images. Let's do that now. Those images are now being imported, they're being renamed and they're also having metadata applied to them and here are the kitten images. There are six of them that we brought in. Now the metadata preset in Bridge is through the Tools menu. You'll go Tools and then Create Metadata Template and you can create a metadata template. Let's just click here. This is my template but let's just clear all the values. The area that I suggest you complete is IPTC Core. You're going to complete the creator with your name, your job title, your address, city and state as well as your zip code and country. You can add your phone, your email and your website and they're the important ones to add to all of your images so that somebody can find you if they need to. The other ones that you may want to complete and I suggest you do is a copyright notice and copyright status so that you indicate that your images are copyrighted and any terms and I usually put in there all rights reserved and no use without permission. 
The other field that you may want to complete is down here and it's in the type of source here. And in this case, you'd be selecting original digital capture of a real life scene. And then you can create a name for your template. So I'm just going to call this test for now and then click save. And once you've created a template, when you go to import images into Bridge or using Bridge, you can use that template. So let's go again and get photos from the camera. Let's go and select Drive F and you'll see here that you've got your test metadata. So this is the preset that we just created that we could then apply to these images on import. So if you're using Photoshop, then Bridge is a really good tool to use to import images from a camera card or your camera onto your computer. If you're using Lightroom, then Lightroom is a good tool to use. Let's just have a look at the Lightroom process and I'm going to click here to import the images. Here in Lightroom, the source is automatically being determined. So Lightroom is going and having a look at that camera card and it's identifying all the images. It's also identified a image in a folder on my camera card that is called dust. But I can just turn that off if I don't want to bring that dust image in. Now Lightroom is just going to check these photos. It's just determining what is there and it's also determining what the new photos are because I have Lightroom set to not import suspected duplicates. So not only does Lightroom need to check and see what's on that disk, but it also needs to make sure that none of these images have previously been imported because if they have previously been imported, then Lightroom won't import them again. In Lightroom, I get to choose my previews and I build standard previews and I always build smart previews. And like in Bridge, I have the ability to make a second copy of my images on import. And I have a folder here that I'm going to use. This is a folder that I have of some previous images that I shot of this kitten and I'm going to put the new images in exactly the same folder. Here too, I can rename my files should I want to. I can also add metadata. Now I also have a metadata preset here in Lightroom that I can apply. So I'm just going to call or select this Helen Bradley copyright. But unlike in Bridge where I had to create my metadata template outside of the import dialog, in Lightroom we can create a new metadata template here so we can do it during the import process. It's just a little bit more logical in Lightroom but I have mine already selected so I'm going to do that. Keywords, there's not a lot of keywords that I would associate generally at the import stage but if I wanted to I could do so. And I'm just going to make sure that the images are going into the correct folder. And I like to organize my images all into one folder but if you want to organize them by date you can do that as well. Lightroom will just arrange them by the capture date into folders. But as I said, I'm going to select only one folder. I want all of mine in together. Now in Lightroom, once I've selected the location for the images, I can just click import. Again, as in Bridge, move is not an option and neither is add. When you're bringing images in from a camera or a camera card, copy and copy as DNG are the only options you have in Lightroom because Lightroom is assuming that the camera or camera card are going to be removed from the computer. So they're not drives that are going to be there all the time. So you can't add images to a Lightroom catalog directly from a camera or camera card. You have to copy them or copy as DNG. And you can see that there's no option here in Lightroom to delete the images from the camera card as it should be. There shouldn't be one. You need to deal with that separately and you'll want to make sure that your images are safely inside your catalog and on your computer before you go ahead and delete them. So we could just click import now to go ahead and import these images. You'll find that with a bit of care and attention, you'll be able to get your images off your camera card and onto your computer in a place that you know they are. If you're using Lightroom, let Lightroom manage the process. You've got a whole lot more options this way and the whole process should be much simpler. If you're using Photoshop, then Bridge is a good tool for importing your images and it gives you plenty of options 
for the import process. And if you're using other software, then you can use Windows Explorer or you can use Finder on the Mac and copy the images across manually, create your own folder structure for them. And when you copy the images across, you're sure exactly where the images are so that you can then access them in other programs. You could access them in Photoshop, you could access them in Photoshop Elements or GIMP or whatever photo editing application you're using. I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. Look out for more of my video tutorials here on my YouTube channel and consider subscribing to my channel and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. And visit my website at projectwoman.com where you'll find more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications including Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator and a whole lot more.